basically uh, we're going to add in that document also the different responsibilities of each individual within the fleet and their rank and all that other shit. So right now I've got a couple of pointers for Alucard. So uh, Alucard is president. Uh, he is overseer of main operations. Uh, he makes decisions, enforces policy. Um, he's uh, he will be up, uh, updates the updates every two days uh, for the tread for the uh, to sovereign to to update. He's in charge of the meetings. Uh, and we are. And we will have a meeting in the state to determine the actions. Oh, he will also determine what actions we will... Phone, swear to God, shut the fuck up. Okay, go across the room. Um, he is also in charge of making the power play decisions for the following week once we get briefed on all that shit. Uh, and he gets up to date and gets back in the game and his command center up and running and all that crap. Um, me, Tarkin, uh, Super Dave, uh, Vice President, Red Star Line, uh, head of the Red Star Bank, manages the fleet bank, promotes taxes, uh, in, in charge of financial investment opportunities, writes the economic lore, and comes up with the physical budget. I'm also in charge of the trading division of the Red Star Line. Uh, Sovereign, now we get into the, 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 the rest of it. So, Sovereign and Chernobyl are are two uh, independent um, privately co they're basically our PFCs they are our private military contractors for uh, combat protection so we have two branches uh, escort wing and fighter wing the escort wing is every ship that is not a fighter in the game so everything bigger than uh, a small landing pad is a escort the exception being a vulture but it's basically an escort um, so, um, Sovereign is in charge. He is, he is combat admiral, or fleet admiral, whatever. whatever. He, he, he is an admiral of a private PMC corporation within the company that we've hired to um, escort our, our fleets. So he's in charge of the escort wing. So everything bigger than a, a small landing pad qualifies as, an, as a big escort. Uh, all of the small landing pads, so like the Cobra, the Viper... Uh, the Eagle, all that shit. Those are fighter wings. Chernobyl will technically, uh, so far, is in charge of that. That is Gold Squadron, an another PM PMC that we've hired and and added to the Red Star Line to help us with all this. Um, uh, Walter. So, Walter's job. He is uh, RSL Exploration Corps. Research and Development Chief Scientist. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you like how I came up with that? Um, he is going to create the back. He is. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I try, guys. I'm not trying to be an asshole here. Um, I, I do get snarky from time to time, but it's only because I care. All right. So Walter's job technically is to do one of two things. One of a couple of things. Uh, he's going to help us. Uh, technically create the backstory for the whites for the red star line within elite dangerous lore um, he's going to be up to date on all the activities um, in elite dangerous he needs to be um, he's going to create a research division to study the unusual artif uh, artifacts anomalies and uh, to ascertain the the threat of the uh, thargoids uh, their job is to explore and observe not to engage because uh, they're explorer ships, not combat if I vessels. Yes. Right. Right. So, um, right. that is correct. So, Walter, no offense, but uh, let me go ahead and finish. We can talk about all the specifics of your yeah, job go ahead, go ahead. after the meeting. All right. So, because I need to. I need to nail this. Um, so, basically, he's in charge of research and development on the Thargoids, basically. He is also in charge of his personal responsibility to the fleet is keeping up to date on all of the forums for Elite Dangerous, all of the scientific discoveries, 
all of the new research that we are conducting. So basically he needs to go catch up on everything Elite Dangerous Community has learned the last three years. No offense, that's a big job, but you wanted it, so there you go. Um, so he needs to stay up to date on all that. He also needs to keep up to date on all the YouTubers that I've messaged him already about. Uh, basically, they're really important YouTubers to the Elite Dangerous community that are all about telling the community what they have learned about the Elite Dangerous. So basically, it's twofold. The forums keep them up to date on everything that we need to know about and all the YouTubers who are already going to broadcast that information. And then he's going to present, he's going to make a report, uh, a text document. He will bring that to the meetings and then he will read it off during the meetings when his time is allowed um, to give us a briefing on all the information that he has acquired. That's that. Um, as far as the rest of the hierarchy, uh, it's still up in the air. I know we need a couple more people to have uh, some uh, very significant roles in the fleet. Um, we need to cover that uh, at a s probably after the main portion of the meeting. Those who are interested in being um, more involved in the operations uh, can stay after the meeting is adjourned, and we will discuss that. So I don't hold all of the other players who have other things they need to take care of. Um, all right. In the document is also several links to several important websites, most notably the Elite Dangerous uh, Reddit posts, Reddit forum, uh, my Twitch stream, um, the Red Star Line uh, tread for the company, um, and all that, all the YouTuber names and all that nonsense. Okay. That's, that, that's the primary document. Uh, it needs to be updated with more information as time is allotted later. Um, Okay. Housekeeping. Um, you don't have to play Elite Dangerous every single day. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're not gonna make you do it. Um, but it is nice to get some things done. We'll talk more about your dailies um, after the after the main portion of the meeting because most of that will be uh, answered during the uh, seminar that I will be getting to shortly. Um, that's that. That's that. Um, housekeeping. That, 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 that. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, we've already covered the main, the main, the, the main objective of the Red Star Line is to A, transport uh, civilians in passenger missions. That's the main goal. Second goal is to provide trade, uh, enable trade routes, and sell people commodities that they actually need um, within Edmund Mahone's territory. That's the final goal. We're not going to slave trade forever uh, because eventually we'll be making more money within Edmund Mahone's territory. We'll cover that later than slave trading. So we'll cover that later. Um, provide trade with, with Edmund Mahone because we're going to support him because we're obviously with him. Duh. Um, three, we need to make sure Edmund stays on top. We need to do our power play shit to to influence the galaxy the way we want to. And we need to improve our minor faction uh, that we will be covering later um, to make it as influence, influential within the uh, Elite Dangerous game uh, as we see fit. Okay. What is power play? Okay, here we go. This should be fairly s uh, straightforward. Um, let me just grab the link real quick. Where the fuck is it? Thank you. Okay. Copy. Paste into Twitch chat. Boom. Okay. Uh, inside the stream broadcast on Twitch is the link that I will be posting on Xbox in a few minutes when somebody else is talking um, for the Lazy Commander's Guide to Power Play. Now, I'm lazy. And this, is, this, this whole fleet thing is a big responsibility, so I, I'm basically out of my element. <laughs> but I'm still a lazy person. So, because I'm super fucking lazy, I'm actually going to let the computer read the entire guide for you. And it'll be funny as hell. Um, because I'm a lazy person. And probably it'll, this thing will probably read it faster than I will anyways. Alright, so. Um, I need to get my volume up on my computer. So we don't have to spend forever doing this. And I'm going to turn off my fan, because it may or may not be annoying for certain people while this is going on. 
Okay. All right. So basically, um, I've got got a, a a PDF viewer that will actually read it for me. So uh, I've already made the edits to the for, uh, to the to the guide so that it's easier for the computer to read it. So. Um, it's probably going to be loud at first, and I will adjust volume as needed. A Lazy Commander's Guide to Power Play written and illustrated by Adeptus Kaze. Presented by Super Dave Echo 419 Faux Hammer, Vice President of Red Star Line Incorporated. On board Space Station, Hardeman Aerospace North Star 4. Opening Statement, Politics is a game for those with too much time and or money on their hands. Major Point 1. Introduction. The first and most important question to ask yourself when considering power play is, what's in it for me? Let's talk for a moment about what power play is not. Letter A. Power play is not a quick way to increase your finances. You will do much better to devote your time to trade, bounty hunting, or mining if you are looking to quickly advance yourself fiscally. Letter B. Power play is not a mechanic to get you awesome OP equipment, none of the faction-specific gear is raid gear. It's cool and different, but you can buy more effective gear off the regular market. Letter C. Power play is not even a good long-range investment because of your power play rank. Letter D. Okay, that being said you might ask, why the heck do you do this thing then Kaze? Fair enough. Let's talk about what power play is, and the WIIFM, number one. Power play is a great way to find purpose within a sandbox universe. Your actions affect not just yourself, but other players, and even the environment that you play in. Each power does specific things to the systems under their control and exploitation. It can change the levels of different kinds of NPCs, commodities, payouts for bounty hunting or trade, and even provide discounts on ships and outfitting depending on who is in power. Some ships are specifically offered in the control systems of specific powers. Check the stats tab of each power to see who does what, and effect their rule has on the systems under their control. I will add future guides on why you might choose each power as I get time. Number 2. These factors should go into considering who to work for, where to base yourself, and who to make your enemy even as you consider which power's benefits package suits you best. Number 3. Each power also, under the pledge tab, show you what benefits that you get for being a member of that power. For our purposes, only pay attention to what you get up through rank 4, because rank 5 will take some serious effort to reach, ranks 2 through 4, not so much. Number 4. Like any good politician, I play the long game and look to put as little effort into making a living in my profession as possible. At rank 5, politics becomes self-sustaining and profitable, but only if you are patient. End of page 1. Okay, just a second. A Lazy Commander's Guide to Power Play Major Point 2. Read this first. Letter A. Now before you dive headlong into joining a power, I suggest that you read the Acelings Angels excellent article The Popular Guide to Power Play and Cypher 871, Insightfuls, Power Play Decay, The Definitive Answer, and the Official Manual, and Walt Kerman's Ex Minor Factions. Asterisk, all links are provided if you check the actual forum post shortcut in the Dropbox folder. Letter B. Why should I bother to work for the following? Number 1. Zachary Hudson. Number 2. Pre Navantal. Number 3. Arisal Avini Duval. Number 4. Edmund Mahone. Number 5. Felicia Winters. Number 6. Aisling Duval. Number 7. Li Yong Rui. Number 8. Zamina Torval. Number 9. Archon Delane. Number 10. Denton Patrius, number 11, Yuri Grom, major point 3, rank 1 equals 0 merits, bullet 1, weekly bonus equals 1000 credits, bullet 2,
Preparation nominations equals zero. Bullet 